Well, how do there, Charmers? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and this is a cup of tea with Captain Steve. Yes, got my own brew. I guess I'll set that down there. Now, I want to talk about Acolyte. This is the new Disney Plus Star Wars spin off sort of show, and I want to emphasize spin off sort of show. I mean, yes, it's Star Wars, but it's kind of doing its own thing with the force in episode three and it's got a lot of people upset with what it's doing and how it's put it across and the thing that i think has overstepped the line and caused a lot of the friction is where the actual mother of this covenant of witches the high priestess actually turns around and says yeah it's called the fred yeah some people call it the force but you know they shouldn't be wielding it uh, you shouldn't wield the force it should be something that you grow with in a roundabout way they see it more spiritual how can it be more spiritual than the force it's condescending and divisive the way that it's put across and i think that's where it oversteps the mark you know we've had other interpretations of the force by other jedis there's one jedi and she feels that the force is to do with sound like a melody or it's either dissonant to harmonic. So it's harmonic or dissonant. So that's a different interpretation of the Force. There's actually a Wookiee Jedi that actually sees the Force as being a giant tree, almost like Gaia, or think of the movie Avatar with the Tree of Life and how everything's interconnected. And their interpretation is like a giant tree. You grow with the Force. Okay, so there are reimaginings of the Force out there already in canon to the Star Wars universe and lore. So they haven't broke anything there, but it's never been rebranded. Okay, they just rebranded it as the thread. Okay. Now I used to watch a TV show called Ulysses 31, and there's the three fates inside of that. And they 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 claim that there's a force amongst the universe called the fate or the, the thread that binds everything together and it controls your fate, per se. And it reminded me of that. Here's a little snippet. We are the three fates. We are the goddesses who rule the destiny of men. Each thread is the destiny of one man. He is born. He lives. And he dies. Go to sleep. Forget everything. The earth, everything. Yeah, if you haven't seen Ulysses 31, you ought to. There's a full freaking remastered version, a full playlist of it online. Go watch it. It's freaking awesome. Yeah, recommend that one. So another thing that people are getting upset about is the fact that there's no males amongst this group of witches. Okay, now I just want to point out that the planet Daphomir is actually canon to the Star Wars universe. In fact, a group of witches is where Darth Maul came from. And you're like, hold on, Captain Steve, he's male. Yes, you're right. However, this coven of witches, okay, are all predominantly female, and they only have males there as breeding stock and to do manual labory tasks, like building things and stuff like that and they put them into slavery. Now this coven of witches, to keep the males in line, just to breed with them, essentially, they, they and to do all the slavery stuff they don't want to do, they've got rancors. And the actual coven of witches use mind control abilities, use the thread or the force. This is the first time this coven of witches have ever referred to their magical abilities as being the thread rather than the force, even in canon universe. So I can see where the line has been crossed. But they control these rancors and they actually ride rancors into battle they're freaking awesome the witches inside of the star wars canon universe and they're a powerful group of women they get fine it just seems that the disney sort of reimagining of this where's the males where have they gone they're still used inside the star wars lore but they're, they're kept into slavery or oh, maybe that doesn't quite fit the narrative that disney wants to put across okay but you're happy to put out a different narrative. I mean, <laughs> come on. If you're going to do one, do the other, basically. I want to keep my channel politics free, okay? So I'm drawing from the lore of Star Wars. 
I don't know where Disney is drawing from. They're like going, yeah, we like this bit. We like that bit. But no, we're not going to put that in there. We're not going to have all the males as being slaves. Heck no. Come on, Disney. If you're going to do it, do it properly. Okay. And, and then the fans that know the law would be happy. Where's the Rancors? But then again, they've gone to another planet. So this planet is not Daphomir. This planet is something like Brendock or something like that. It pops up at the start very quickly. Blink, you freaking miss it. But their planet they're on is called Brendock. I can't find planet Brendock anywhere inside of the Star Wars lore. So it looks like they've given themselves free reign. This is an offshoot from Daphomir because basically Daphomir, this group of witches that brought Darth Maul into the verse, the Jedi's and the Jedi Council kind of see it as a threat to the balance and harmony of the universe and eventually Daphomir gets wiped out, bit by the Jedi's, bit by the Empire, bit by everything. But all these witches get sort of spread amongst the worlds and they're supposed to be completely extinct but we saw one inside of Ashoka. So you shouldn't be surprised by witches at this stage if you've been watching all of the Disney series because Ashoka has got the Sisters of the Night or the Night Sisters, can never get that around the right way. But it's got one of them in it, the lady in red, the one that raises that little marble with the, the green flame. Yeah. yeah, she was a witch. I mean, that's why all the stormtroopers came back to life and stuff, you know? Anyways, so they are canon. And if you watch Clone Wars, you would know all this too. You know, some people like Clone Wars, some people don't, hey ho. But all I'm trying to get out to you is that the Coven of Witches, a female based users of the Force, and this is another thing. The witches use the dark side of the force. They tap into the dark side of the force massively. And those that actually turn to the dark side, the witches actually expel. And they be they came a separate faction. They became the Sisters of the Night. There's a load of factions. There's like one of the river, one of the valley, or one of the ravine or something like that. There's loads of factions of these witches, but most of them are quite good with what they do. They're almost like, yeah, they're almost like female Jedis in a roundabout way, but they're an offshoot but they've always called it the Force. I don't know why Disney had to go and cross a line, call it the Fred, call it something else, especially when, it, like over here in the UK, we have what comes out called a census and you write down what your religion is, okay? A lot of people have actually put Jedi as a religion and they kind of see the Force as something that's binding and unifying. So to go and then call it something that it's not is almost attacking a religion at this stage i mean it's not kind of a it's not really a bona fide recommend recognized religion yet i mean the census i think actually ticked over to the right number to have it as a registered freaking religion I, I haven't checked before doing this video it might be a registered recognized religion now here in the uk then again so is cthulhu isn't it so uh, you know, see there's eyebrow uh, it's permanently stuck there at the moment <laughs> because there is a lot of questionable stuff inside of acolyte it's like the four sensitive kids you know the main two you know the acolyte which is may and then the other one which is kind of the good girl of the two oscar you see it's a bit of a friction i almost see that as an imbalance like the light versus the dark side of the force happening right there between these two twins now they were brought into the verse get this with no father so it's almost like how anakin came about you know shmi saying there was no father it's almost like well hold on he's the chosen one yet we've got these two that were born in the same way but that's not what's actually said inside of this episode because the actual mother of the two is confronted by her partner, who's called Coril or something like that. But she looks like Darth Maul. She's got all the spikes on her head, just like Darth Maul. And I like that tie-in that Darth Maul came from a covenant of witches. And we've got this same sort of race as Darth Maul standing right there. Is there some sort of tie-in between her and Darth Maul? Anyways, she says to the, the other mother, she, she says, well, I carried them. And, she, and the other mother turns around and says, well, I created them. And then the one that looks like Darth Maul, Coral, turns around and says, yeah, but if the Jedi find out how you created them, and it's like, well, how? How did she create them? Was it the Force? Was it this Fred? Or was it some sort of DNA manipulation? We don't know. Now, considering that in Mando, the, the Empire are after trying to get hold of little Grogu because they want his blood so they can clone a whole army of these freaking little Jedi masters or something, 
makes you think, well, if they have tried, and also the cloning sort of platforms on Kamuni or whatever it is, the, you know, the water-blazed planet, where they've cloned a load of Mandalorians to make stormtroopers, they can successfully clone Crickens, Force-sensitive kids. So if they have managed to crack it in this little coven of witches on Brendok, people are going to want to know how. Because you can make a whole freaking army of four sensitive kids. You know? But then they had to be carried to term, so it's going to take nine months. You're going to need a lot of mothers. You're going to need a lot. But even still, they're going to want to know. They're going to want to know how that was accomplished because every other freaking person has tried and, and they've got advanced technology. And you've done it on a planet where you're sort of like outcasted and you've got hardly any technology sitting there. What the actual flying fudge? How did you do it? So I'm hoping that in the rest of this season we get answers to those questions. If we don't, then it's going to massively affect the way that I score this, okay? I quite liked Ashoka at the start and then I drifted off of it. I mean, the end of Ashoka really didn't do it for me. You know, when they actually found who they were looking for for all this time and risked the whole universe to find him and then they find him and... Yeah, it's just a massive letdown, the end of Ashoka. It really is. So I scored Ashoka about a, about a 6.5 out of 10. Right now, I would say what I'm seeing with Acolyte, apart from what I just saw in episode 3, I would have scored it at about a 7.5 so far. I kind of like some of what I'm seeing. So in each episode of The Acolyte so far, there's been some real dodgy bits of scripting and writing. It's like uh, the fire in space, you know, it's just pretty odd in episode one. In episode two, there's a couple of weird things in there. It's like Torben. Torben, they know that if someone tried to assassinate him, what do they do? They don't increase the guards, they don't close off the skylight. It's just poorly written in places and there's pretty poor acting in places. And episode three, the acting gets a little bit shoddy and there's some real cringe moments, especially when they're doing their ritual work. And their ritual work is basically just a Disney song, which is the power of one, the power of two, the power of three, and it, or the power of many, sorry. Uh, that, I think, is a play on real life, occultism and, and witchcraft, because a coven has three witches as a minimum, you know, the, the, the triquerta, the coven. And I think it's a play on that. But the way that they do it, it comes across like they're playful and lovely and happy and joyful witches. That's not how the witches are inside of Star Wars lore. They're badass, they're, they, they're subjective, manipulative, in control of rancors and powerful. You don't mess with them and they certainly wouldn't be playing patter cake and doing little rhymes and things. Oh, I am you and you are me and all that sort of bollocks. No, that just wouldn't happen. So there's, there's things in there that are written outside of the lore and there's subtleties that just wouldn't have happened or shouldn't have happened. In every episode so far, they've done something that has overstepped the line. And in episode three, calling the force, the thread, is overstepping the line. For entertainment's sake, I said to Ivy, how would you score this? Okay, now Ivy is not a massive Star Wars fan. She's got into Star Wars since she's met me. And we've watched everything Star Wars together. And she actually likes it and enjoys it for entertainment purposes. She doesn't know the lore. She doesn't know backstory. She hasn't played any of the video games. She hasn't watched Clone Wars. And I said to her, what do you think of this? And she said, oh, well, I'd score it a, a 9 out of 10. I'm really enjoying it. I would really like this. I like this more than Ashoka. I said, do you like it as much as Mandalorian? She was like, yeah, I like it as much as maybe season 3. And I was like, okay, well, what did you score Mandalorian? She goes, 10. 10, easy 10. So you know, she's, on the right, she's on the right level. Um, but I would score this because I know the law and, uh, and stuff like that. I would score this around about you know, a, a seven. I, I like it more than the show for the moment, but it depends how the rest of the season goes. They need to explain that the Fred is actually just the force and the witches don't know what the fudge they're talking about <laughs> when it comes to the force, basically, or it it's not the Fred, it's the force and they've just it misinterpreted it, you know, that sort of thing. And they also need to explain how these two twins, these four sensitive twins, were created. And I'm hoping it's not using the Force, and I'm hoping it's not using the Fred. Or if it is, it's using the dark side, and this is not prophecy. 
thing, eh? That that would then sort of bring it back into the realms of, okay, I can deal with all this sort of divisiveness so far, but I want them to start ticking some boxes that are inclusive of every single race and make it feel like, you know, it appeals to everyone. Because at the moment, this has got a very sort of left-leaning female slant. Kennedy. We were just discussing uh, ideas of what to do with the new Prince Eric movie. Put a ticket in, make her gay. Uh, I, I'd like to call myself middle. I, I, I don't lean to the left, I don't lean to the right. I can see benefits of both. Rather impartial. And I keep my channel impartial of politics. But it's very hard to keep my channel free of politics when I'm actually talking about a show that is definitely using politics as an influence. You see what I'm coming from? Anyway, people, that's, that's kind of my summing up of Acolyte. You're going to either like it or you're going to hate it. And all I want to point out to you is inside of Star Wars lore, there is different interpretations of the Force, but it's always called the Force. And also there has been very strong female cults out there that are practicing witchcraft that is an offshoot of the Force. Okay, it's still the Force. I mean, let's face it, the Force inside of Star Wars is measured. They take blood samples and test medichlorian levels. Okay, so it's, it's a scientific thing as well as being a spiritual thing that binds everything together. Now, the way that the Jedi go about using it might not be the only way to use the Force. You know, there's different interpretations of it. So I can kind of go so far, but when they actually rebrand it, rebrand it as the Fred, that's crossing a line. So there's quite a lot of unanswered questions at the moment, and I'm hoping that this season answers all of those questions. And the questions that I would like answered is, did all the witches actually die and what actually killed them? Because they don't have burn marks from the fire. They haven't got limbs severed from lightsabers and they haven't been stabbed by lightsabers, or if they have, it's not clearly visible. So what actually ended them all? And how? Because they're quite powerful. And there was only four Jedis against a whole coven of witches that are pretty darn freaking epic inside of the lore and can handle Jedis in the lore. So yeah, I want to understand that. I also want to understand who is May's sort of master. Because she's a learner, she's a Padawan, or a Sith maybe. I don't know what she is. Well, she's an acolyte, obviously, from the title. But who is underneath that mask? Is it the mother? Is it the, the, the other mother? You know, is it the spiky head one that looks like freaking Darth Maul? Is it Darth Maul? <laughs> it won't be Darth Maul. But, you know, who is that? Who is that main antagonist, the man, main bad guy with a big smiley Darth type mask? And who was their master? So there's a lot of unanswered stuff there. Also, Torbin has got a massive scar down his face. How did he get that scar? And why does he feel so entrenched in all of this that he decides to drink that as his way out. Why didn't he go in front of the Jedi Council? Why did he choose that after already punishing himself for 10 years in forced meditation? Surely that's kind of some sort of recompense, but is it? We don't know what they've done. We don't know what the Jedi have done. Did the Jedi cause that fire? Are they responsible? There's so many sorts of questions that I want answered. If they can answer all those and they do that well, I think they might be able to redeem this and it might climb up in my actual estimates. But my current rating remains the same. Um, and the reason why it's at a 7 and not lower than Ashoka is because I still think it's got potential to answer these questions. If it doesn't, then it's going to plummet. It's going to be below Ashoka because these first three episodes are just poorly acted, poorly scripted. You know, I've given you all the examples. But anyway, that's how I feel at the moment. I'm going to go and refill my tea. The first time I recorded this, my mic didn't work, so I've had to re-record this completely all over again. But I think I've done a slightly better take this time. Till next time, people. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.